Easter. A time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? One of my favorite things about Easter is that it's different from any other holiday. In fact, I'm gonna throw something out there uh, that seems kind of crazy, but just go with me on it, okay? When you think about it, Easter has some like strange similarities to Halloween. I mean, it's nothing like Halloween, but just some things that are kind of like, like we wear nice clothes instead of scary clothes. And instead of like dressing up and going to houses to ask for candy, a giant, slightly creepy bunny comes to your house when you're sleeping and leaves you candy, right? That's a little strange. Easter is definitely different from other holidays, but it's still awesome. I mean, all the festivities, egg hunts, candy, and fluffy animals make it a fun and lighthearted, happy holiday. But can we be real for just a second? We know we're supposed to be like happy about Easter, but it, it doesn't always feel like a lighthearted, happy holiday when we talk about it at church, does it? Like after we get past the candy and the fancy clothes and egg hunts, we learn about the details that surround the original Easter story. It's about a cross, murder, blood, torture, death, sin, and a grave. We talk about some pretty dark stuff. Then we close it out and say, Happy Easter, see you next week, which can make you wonder, is this really a happy holiday? So last week we began talking about the reality of Easter and why we consider it a holiday, a time to celebrate. And one of the reasons many people feel it's worth celebrating is Easter is part of God forgiving us for our sins. Basically, thousands of years ago, God went to great lengths to rescue us from the power of sin. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus lived a perfect life, and at the end, he was murdered on a Roman torture instrument called a cross. He died, not because of his sin. You remember, he was perfect, but because of the sins of others. The whole story is just pretty tough to hear. Jesus suffering on the cross is a picture of just how devastating sin can be. His death and resurrection showed us not only his love for us, but his power over sin and death. And that's why Easter is an amazing thing. That is why it is a happy holiday. Now, maybe for you, just the word sin is kind of a weird, churchy, not fun term that really clashes with the whole happy Easter idea or maybe you aren't even clear on what that word means. After all, lots of people disagree about what is a sin, what isn't, and why that even matters. So for today, let's agree on this. When we say sin, what we mean is anything less than what God says is best. So things like lying, cheating, stealing, hating, and not seeing ourselves or others the way God does, all of that is sin. But can we just stop for a second and consider how it all got to this point? Actually, you know, before we do that, let, let's get real. Is sin really that big of a deal? I mean, murder, yeah, that's a big deal. That's really bad, but like cheating on a test? Stealing? Eh, using someone else's Netflix password? Is all sin that big of a deal? Like die on a cross kind of a big deal? Doesn't that seem like a little extreme? Well, the Apostle Paul, who we talked about last week, was the author of most of the books and letters that make up the New Testament. And in a letter he wrote to Christians in ancient Rome, he talked about the effects of sin. And he says this, for the wages of sin is death. <laughs> See, this isn't exactly the happy Easter vibe we're looking for, is it? But it does show us why God seems to care so much about our sin. Sin is a big deal to God because it brings death. And I get that sounds a little extreme, but just think about it for a second. If you gossip about a friend behind their back and they find out, it kills your relationship with them or for a little while. If you cheat on a test and your teacher finds out you wind up failing a class or a test and your goal for a good grade dies. You lie to your parents and the trust they had for you seems to die as part of the punishment or you have sexual encounters with someone and it feels like a part of the way 
you value yourself or the way you value others dies in the process. See, sin always brings death to something, a friendship, a dream, a relationship, your self-worth, health, or any of the other things that you value most. And I think so often we think God says to stay away from that stuff because he's just mean like that, or he's just controlling like that. In reality, so often God says, don't do that because whatever the that thing is has incredible power to bring pain or even death into our lives. And sin doesn't just bring death to something. It also brings death to someone. If we are constantly wrapped up in our sin, our lives begin to head in a direction that tears us apart from the inside out. We feel distant from God, we lose hope for a better day, and the consequences of our actions eventually catch up with us. And before we know it, we wind up in a place in life that we never intended to be. It's like there are parts of us and who we are created to be that are dying. Something is missing in our souls. And maybe the worst part of all of it is that even when we know sin hurts us, we don't stop. Think about it. Nearly all of us have done something wrong, gotten hurt, and done the exact same thing again. And we're not stupid. It's just that sin can feel powerful. No matter what kind of sin, the more we do it, the more we get hurt, and the more we believe that we have no power to stop. And this problem of sin isn't just an issue for us in our generation. This has been true from the beginning of humanity. The apostle Paul talked about it using these words. He says, the wages of sin is death. Wages is the same word as paycheck. It just means that's what you get in return. And what we get in return for our sin, our wrong behavior, our wrong thinking, wrong view of others, and wrong view of ourselves is death. It was death of who God created us to be, how we were intended to live, and the relationship God wanted to have with us. Think about it this way. Sin always leads to the death of something good. And sin over time can kill more and more of the good in our lives. In fact, that's exactly where all of humankind was before the very first Easter. But then Jesus came, lived a life without sin, and was put to death. He didn't deserve death. He had no sin, but he took the wages we earned. He took the death that we earned. Look at how the, the Apostle Paul finishes his statement. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is what makes Easter so happy. All the talk of blood, suffering, and the cross isn't the end of the story. The Easter story isn't about death, it is about life. Yes, Jesus did die because of sin, and his death shows us how sin can kill us physically and spiritually, but the more important part is that he didn't stay dead. Three days after people took him off a Roman cross and laid his dead body in a sealed tomb, he got up fully alive. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a spirit. He was the resurrected, once literally dead, but now literally alive, Jesus. And in that moment, Jesus proved everything he ever said about himself, about God, about us, and about how much he loves us. What we couldn't do for ourselves, he did for us. He broke the power of sin. He overcame the death that our sins earned us, and he gave us life in return. So why is Easter so happy? It's because of this. Easter means new life is possible. When the resurrection happened, Jesus showed us that instead of living in the hopelessness of sin, because of him, we can have a fresh start. He can not only forgive us of all that we've done wrong, but he can give us a new life full of hope. And what's amazing about this is that when you have a relationship with God, he begins the work of raising dead things back to life. He can bring your relationships back to life. He can bring your self-worth back to life. He can bring your dreams back to life. He can bring your sense of purpose back to life. He can bring your joy back to life. The parts of us that have been killed by sin, God can bring them back to life. Does that happen miraculously all at once? But maybe, but more often it is a process as he gives us the power to live like him. Our life begins to look less and less like who we used to be and more and more like the new life he wants for us. 
Easter means new life is possible because we can have a relationship with God and he can start something new in us. So the question is this, what's one area of your life where you need new life? And all of us might answer that question a little differently. Like for some of you, this may be the very first time you've really understood what Easter is all about. Maybe you've celebrated by decorating eggs and eating candy, but you've never understood why we celebrate it or what that means for you personally. And when you hear about the gift of new life, you realize it is exactly what you need. You realize, hey, you've been going in a different direction than what God says is best. You even see things in your life that are dying because of it. If that's you, then maybe it's time that you trade your life for his life. See, Jesus dying on the cross was God moving towards your life, getting into your sin and paying the price for it. The cross is Jesus dying your death for you, and the resurrection is about him defeating it. When you put the trust of your life and the belief of your heart in the person of Jesus and what he did for you through the cross and resurrection, you receive new life. You receive his life. And some of you in this room have already made the decision to follow Jesus, but the reality is you may have some areas where sin is killing some of the best parts of your life. And here's the good news. No matter how life feels right now, you can be confident, you and I can be confident that our sin will never take away the new life God offers us. Yes, hey, your choices come with consequences, but they don't disqualify you from the new life you've been given through Jesus. Just know that you have the power to make a choice. You can start living out of the new life Jesus gives you. You can embrace that new life in a friendship, a family relationship, your self-worth, your dating life, and even your dreams for the future. So maybe today is time for you to ask God to bring new life into a broken part of your life. Ask God for his resurrection power in a part of your life that feels like it's hurting you. Now, if there are any decisions that you're wrestling with or you are thinking about making or you want to make today, I encourage and invite you to share it with someone. Just like any other big decision in life, the decision to follow Jesus is one you can and may want to talk through with a leader, a pastor, a parent, or a trusted friend. Plus, it is great for people to be able to celebrate new life happening in you. Imagine if this was your story that this Easter you began a new life. Even if that sounds impossible, just imagine if it is possible. Your relationships would get healthier, your regrets would no longer consume you, your mistakes would no longer define you, your worst moments would be covered by his incredible love. You would begin to experience the life God has created you to live. How different might your life feel? The truth is new life is possible, and that's exactly why we say Happy Easter.